All right, so this video is going to be about some tips on how to diagnose and repair electronics. Um, I'm just going to give you some basics here. Uh, whenever you're repairing electronics for somebody, whether it's a friend or family or if you, somebody's paying you to do it, try to get some of the history of the device. And I'm not trying to say, you know, how many days a week did you use it or, you know, just ask if it's been dropped, ask if it's been in water asked if it's been abused, asked if anything has ever been worked on, um, you know, stuff like that. Just so it gives you an understanding when you go on the bench, it may put some clues together for you. Because uh, you might open it up and find parts are missing, uh, parts are in the wrong location, or circuit boards snapped or broken in the corner. Uh, you know, and, and they may say, well, I've never touched it, I've never dropped it or anything, and you're going to something happened to it but you know it, it, that's gonna happen so some of the tips to look for, you know to, to is to do is to ask the person that owns the device if uh, if um, you can give you a clue what, what what's going on and then when you get it on the bench you'll you open it up and then what do you do then okay you, you look for bent or broken circuit boards socket uh, solder joints you know puffy capacitors visual stuff now I'm, I'm talking about before even getting the multimeter out or anything or an esr meter or anything like that you know look for you know broken broken solder connections uh components that are missing parts that are burnt uh, circuit board maybe burnt or heated in certain locations uh you know look look at the knobs or any controls make sure that they're secure and not wobbly or loose and uh, check the back of the pots make sure that the back side of the potentiometers aren't falling apart switches uh make sure that you know the the back of the switch isn't falling apart so there are some things you can check before you even get any kind of diagnostic gear out you know just some simple stuff um, you know, you'll know if there's some water damage. You'll probably see some some evidence on the circuit board. You might see some, you know, dust that it's gotten wet and it's kind of smeared off to the side of the device or something. I mean, most likely it's not going to be something that got wet unless it's a phone. And, and not a lot of people work on phones because they're a pain in the ass. And uh, that's just a whole other story. Uh, so, yeah. Um stuff like that just look for any obvious stuff first before you go digging in because if you may end up cleaning clues off your board or your project before you even realize what it was and it may have given you the exact issue that was wrong with it uh you know say oh well this board's filthy i'll just gonna go and clean it before i doing diagnostic work and then you go and take your alcohol swab and, and you're going around cleaning all everything off but you may have had capacitor electrolytes that are that around the capacitor that was leaking uh, you may have had uh, uh, some flux that may have melted from, you know, a hot joint or something that something that overheated. Uh, it could be anything like that, you know. But most likely, try to look for discoloration on the circuit board. That's usually going to be where the heat was built up in any like around the power supply. Most problems are in the power supply. Uh, it's it's very it's it's more unlikely that it's going to be something down the road. It's always most likely going to be power supply. So the first thing I do is I, after I just said all that, first thing I would do is start heading for the power components, the large caps, the big transistors, anything that's going to generate heat, anything mounted to a heat sink. Start looking at it. all those solder connections, all the capacitors in that circuit, any kind of um, uh, uh, connections that are in that circuit. You know solder connections i may have already said that maybe repeating myself but uh yeah just um at that point and if you you know you get to a point where you've actually identified the, the the problem visually then you know what to do you know to pull the you know pull that component out and test it and test everything in that circuit but if you're at that point after you've looked it over intently and, and you don't see anything obviously wrong with it it looks perfectly fine that's the point where you go and plug it in and make sure there's no shorts or anywhere before you plug it in. Um, you know, plug it in and start probing the power supply circuit and making sure if it, the device is not powering on, if that's the symptom, if the, the device isn't powering on, you know, start probing around the power circuit. Sometimes it'll just be something from the switch. The switch might be worn out. You know, you might be able to, you know, see if the switch is functioning. Uh, through a continuity test and make sure that it's actually getting to the board where it actually turns the circuit on 
Uh, this is stuff you can do because I mean you're obviously not going to have schematics for everything you fix, and it's going to be a lot of in intuition on 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 some of this stuff. It's it's really weird how you would develop this intuition on on repairing this stuff, but it's weird. I mean, sometimes I can open something up and within five minutes or just even instantly know what the problem is just by peering into it. Um, and that's probably about fifty percent of the time, you know. And then you get those times where, like, you look everything over and everything looks fine. And then it may take you a little bit while longer to to repair. Um, I mean, amplifiers alone, they're a little bit more complicated. They have more complex circuits, but you know, usually it's like in like um, uh, receivers or anything that has like a dedicated power supply to the lines is usually. Uh, anything that's uh, you know hooked up to the AC outlet is usually always stuff that's gonna develop issues over time because uh, they always stay plugged in they're always live there's always a circuit in there that's you know ready to go when you press the on button standby circuits uh, and then some people leave their devices on so caps dry out you know heat builds up uh, circuit uh, circuit uh, joints crack so yeah, there's, there's a ton of stuff to, to watch out for. Uh, like, repairing this is not... Repairing electronics is... It, 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 it is an art at some point where... where well, I shouldn't even say an art. It's a skill or a to, intuition into the device before um, you even get into it, really. I mean, you get to the point where you actually know the device. It may not even... It may be a receiver, let's say, and... You see that you see the symptom. You know the symptom. You've dealt with the symptom before, so you almost know where to look and where to go. It's just it becomes second nature after a while. You've been doing this stuff, and and it's nice that you can do that. And sometimes you you know you, you know you don't win. You know obviously because sometimes you can have issues that are chasing you around. You know leading you around the board and chasing ghosts. Those are the the fun ones. We call those the jigsaw puzzles. Uh, they they are uh, those suck. Uh, but there are some that come like that, you know, there are some, um, pro uh, repairs that are like that, and those are the ones you lose your shirt on. You know, you tell the guy, yeah, I can fix that for 40 bucks, and the next thing you know, you're spending two days on the damn thing, scratching your head, and it turns out you get this, like, five microfarad, 26.3 uh, volt capacitor or something, you know, and it's, like, buried in a nest of, like, wires or something, that was the ridiculous issue, and... And, you know, stuff like, you know, if you can't find stuff like that, you know, get your, your, your uh, cooling spray and your, your hot air rework station. Start heating the board as it's powered on. Try turning it on. And if it comes back on, then, oh, you know you have a bad cap somewhere or a bad connection that, you know, something has changed thermally. So you can take your free spray and then, you know, hit the, hit the area where you last hit and see if it turns back off. And if it does, then, well, okay, heat it back up and you kind of can narrow it down to an area. And, um, you know, this is all without really using too much test equipment. I mean, we would talk about some heat and cooling. Um, I've mentioned this some of some of my other videos. It, it, it does help uh, diagnose some of these stupid temperature-related issues that when you first come, you know, how many times you put something on the bench, turned it on, and like, yeah, it turned on. Okay, I had a complaint of no power, and now it's working. Nine times out of ten, it's a bad cap. Um, because I've had this happen so many times where it comes from one temperature environment and ends up on your bench as a different temperature environment and that slight temperature difference is enough for the capacitor to stop you know kind of working again so yeah I'm just throwing this out there um, you know until I get some other stuff going here I thought I'd throw a few of these tip videos out maybe they might help uh, so that's about it that's about it that's all I have for tonight so have a good one we'll see you in the next